Your battery dead? He's not having fun today, is he? Nothing is working it's for him. It works now. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> that, that kind of sums up the whole morning. <laughs> so, if you're an uh, audio video specialist, <laughs> talk to me after the service because I can't get that to connect to that to turn on. So, we're going to do this step by step. How's that for a lead in for the next song? You're sitting there going, that guy's blind, you know. 
he should see this because I see this, right? Well, the cat thought I should see him because he can see me, right? He doesn't realize I don't see in the dark. Does now. Interesting. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> he just thought I was being mean or something. <laughs> yeah. Weird things happen. Okay. Just a little levity there. Not for the cat, but for us. <laughs>
but it is heaven in a sense. Um, there's a nice little verse, I think it's in Colossians 3.20, don't quote me on that, but it's in Colossians, where Paul talks about our citizenship is in heaven, and he pulls up that word because that's what, when you become a Christian, you become a citizen of heaven. And in pre-Christian days, the Greeks conquered the world, and they brought the world to, to Greek language and the Greek system and all the things of Greek. Um, my little Greek wedding, right, where it traces all the words back to Greek. Um, and it imp impacted the world. And what they did, Philip the Great, is he would plant colonies so that those colonies of people could spread the Greek culture. And Jesus used that concept. Um, the Romans also did this. They had the Roman roads that connected all their outposts and stuff. But one of the things was there was a special thing that went with being a Roman citizen. Well, there's a special thing that goes with being a kingdom of God citizen. And it's a whole lot super, super better than being a Roman citizen or a Greek citizen. So that's kind of in the background because those colonies have the purpose of spreading their culture. And we have the purpose of spreading our culture. Our culture being Jesus, Christianity. It's the characteristics of the culture, not the rules and regulations, because there aren't there. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Another little concept is people that talk about the kingdom, they're always talking about, you know, after Jesus comes. That's the kingdom. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for yours is. Not yours will be, yours might be, you know, at the end of the world. And you know, no. When you receive Jesus, you receive the kingdom. And you're blessed. The concept of blessedness in Hebrew was um, a state of being. It was a position of getting favor from God or having received favor from God. And that's really what happens when you become a Christian. We receive favor of God. The other word for that is grace. The grace of God. The favor of God. The person who was happy or joy was often affiliated with God's favor. Blessed are the moment you receive Christ. You're there. Your life changes perspective. And a lot of times we change perspective, but we don't change behavior. And that behavior comes later, but you have to change your perspective. Because before you meet Jesus, before I met Jesus, life was all about me. Very me-centered. Our culture is very me-centered. And if you don't agree with me, we'll make you agree with me. That's not Christian. That's not healthy. <laughs> we're not about us all the time. Of course we're about us. I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. Sick, I'm going to go to a doctor. But I'm not going to obsess with myself. And that's the difference. The poor in spirit don't obsess with themselves. Your perspective changes. It's no longer all about me. It's about what does Jesus want me to do. It's not all about me, but how can I bless those people in Jesus' name? How can I impact them for Jesus? How can I make our culture better? How can I make our community better? How can I make my family better? And you do it by not thinking about me, but how can I serve them? How can I impact them? And so your whole perspective on life changes. And that's why you're blessed. Because you're not stuck on self anymore. Blessed are is a continuous, it's a present tense. You are and you continue to be. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor means empty. 
may apply to money, it may apply to power, it may apply to prestige. I'm poor. Spiritually, when you stand up with your life against Jesus Christ or your life against God, not against them, but compare it to them, you're poor. <laughs> you're empty. You're undone. Isaiah, when he saw God high and lifted up, he said, woe is me, I'm a sinful person, I live among sinful people. And he covered his eyes and wanted to rip his garment in mourning, which we'll get to on the next one. But it's that concept of living in the presence of God that we know our right place. We know who we are and we're servants. And this whole, what's this whole thing about anyway? Why did Jesus come and do all this stuff to change lives? Because when we sinned, we went away from God. And the moment Adam and Eve sinned, they got kicked out of the garden. Because they were already messing things up. And that sin was starting to influence the animals. And that sin was starting to influence the whole environment. And they broke their fellowship with God. They used to meet with God every day and walk in the garden and talk and chit-chat and share and and now they're hiding from God. So Jesus came to bring us back into that relationship we had with God before mankind sinned. We still sin, but now we can get forgiveness just like that. Poor. There's it is the kingdom of heaven. It's a present tense. It's not after you die and go to heaven. It's now. The kingdom of God is now. There's a really good little book. Um, some people don't like it. My wife never really enjoyed it. Um, it's called The Secret of the Kingdom. It's written by a Finnish guy, I think. Uh, Miko Waltari is his name. But he tells his story. When I first read it, I stayed up three nights in a row reading this book. I just couldn't put it down. Because it just breathes Jesus. He wrote in such a livid way, a vivid way, and he brought in all this stuff from the Bible that I'd never seen before. And so this is his traveler that goes to Jerusalem when Jesus is being crucified. And he starts hearing stories about him, and he hears a teaching here and a teaching there, and he's just starting to get moved, and he just can't get this guy out of his mind. And um, that's what happens. Your life changes and the kingdom you start to experience it. Secondly, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And these kind of all build on each other. They stand alone, but they also build on each other. So once you're poor and you admit that you need God, then you're in a position to mourn, which is to repent to grieve for what we did to God, to grieve of how we messed up our life, to grieve about all the what ifs that we missed. And when you're ready to grieve and mourn, God says you'll be comforted. I love that word, comforted. In the Greek, it's parakleia. It means to come alongside. That's the Holy Spirit, right? It comes alongside. But it's also like an image of a tugboat. And Coles can tell you a lot more about this than me. But the tugboat, once the, the ship needs the tugboat, the tugboat comes alongside, usually a couple of them, to hold it up. So the tugboat comes aside. The main driving force of the, moving the boat is now the tugboat. <laughs> Who steers the boat? The tugboats. <laughs> and so the tugboats come alongside and those up next to it. And they steer it. They power it. They keep it from falling over by the speed and other things. So that's what Jesus does. When you need God, he comes alongside. He comes inside. And he gives you fortification. He gives you strength to forte. Italian. He 
gives you that strength and power to stay straight, to go straight, to be guided. And again, this is going back to pre-Adam and Eve, where God guided our lives, where God told us what we should do and gave us the power to do it, gave us the wisdom to do it, and that's what's going on. So the first thing you do is you admit you're poor. Second thing you do, you turn around and say, I'm really mess this up. I need help. Help me, God. And when you do that, then it goes to the third one. Blessed are the meek, the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. The word meek is a word picture for power under control. Um, A.T. Roberts uses the illustration of a little, this huge stallion, muscle-rippled stallion. You know, you see some of these Roman stallions that are higher than you can reach. I don't know how many hands that is, 27 or something. <laughs> really big horses, really powerful muscles for them. They can knock down the wall and they have a little two-year-old on it. <laughs> right in there. Okay. So it's this enormous power, but it's always under control and comes out in gentleness. That's what God is, right? Because if he unleashed his power without any constraint, we would wink out of existence. When the earth melts with fervent heat at his second coming, it's going to melt in his presence because he's glorious. He's power. And so it's this enormous power. And God doesn't zap us. Instead, he brings us forgiveness. God doesn't stomp us. Instead, he lifts us up. God doesn't tear us down. Instead, he builds us up. And that's what he came to do in Jesus. And then when Jesus comes to live inside of us, that's what he wants us to do. Not tear down other people. Build them up. Not, not let them <laughs> give me your whole mind. You know, I forgot how to say that in English. Give them a piece of my mind. Some people give them more than a piece, you know. <laughs> and when you're angry, we all do. Don't do that. I mean, think of how Jesus was mistreated and mocked and spurned and the sarcasm thrown at him and stuff. And he never retaliated. He never went, okay, snap, <laughs> you know, as he walked away. He always had that power under control. And it came out in gentleness. The woman caught in adultery. And all these guys caught her, you know, they set her up, basically, otherwise they wouldn't have known she was going to have adultery and stuff. So the whole thing was a setup. And they wanted to test Jesus. And so he asked, uh, any of you who are without sin, throw the first stone, because they were even stoned. It's a punishment for adultery. And uh, so Jesus knelt down on the ground and started writing. And people don't know what he wrote. We don't know what he wrote. <clears throat> Speculation, he started writing those guys' sins, their names, <laughs> what they'd done, you know. And one by one, from the oldest, <clears throat> which would imply you know, <clears throat> the wisest, from the oldest, they started leaving the home. That was power under control. They were trying to set a girl up for murder. Well, for adultery, which would end to her murder. And he dealt with it. But he did it in gentleness. And then he turns to the woman and says, where are your accusers? None, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Gentleness. Meekness. It's not just Jesus. He's in us. We're supposed to be that way. So he gave this to his disciples that they could give it to us and all believers could learn this important information and be transformed.
transformed. It's the Beatitudes are, these are what we are supposed to be. Attitudes we're supposed to be. Humble, unpretentious, poor, aware that for the grace of God there go I. Meek, power under control, gentle, treating people with dignity. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom, well, the earth, not the kingdom. And again, the point is, if you, if you have lived the life that we're supposed to live, which is under the control of God, and under the direction of God, then God can trust the world to us. It's never enough. 
We're always hungry for something more. But when your hunger for, is for righteousness, for God, you will be satisfied because he's got more than you can take. Let's pray. Father, help us to be your people and be this little colony that spreads and invites others to be a part of our culture and shares our culture, the kingdom of heaven, with them. Help us to be your people and to take joy in it and take delight in it and experience the benefits of being with you. Bless each person here today with an awareness that they're blessed and that they're to be a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. While well, these guys are coming, um, Dan, Carla, you want to come? It's Dan and Carla Hill. Thank you. 